Hi everyone, good morning, Af good afternoon. Um, I have a few items to pass along at the top and then I'd be happy to take your questions. So first, on Sunday, Deputy Secretary of Defense Dr. Kathleen Hicks departs on travel to Alaska to visit um, Eielson Air, Air Force Base, Fort Wainwright, and Joint Base Elmendorf-Richardson. At each, at each installation, the Deputy Secretary will hold roundtables with service members to discuss quality of life issues, access to mental health care, and suicide prevention efforts. She will also meet with senior leaders and tour housing, barracks, childcare, commissaries, healthcare, and recreational facilities to see firsthand to see firsthand how the U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force are working to improve quality of life and making sure that we are taking care of our people serving in the Arctic. The Deputy Secretary will also visit two Army cold weather research facilities in Fairbanks and the Ted Stevens Center for Arctic Security Studies in Anchorage to learn more about the effects of climate change on military readiness and research programs focused on improving resilience in the Arctic. Another item, on May 26, Secretary Austin will deliver the commencement address at the U.S. Naval Academy's 2023 commencement ceremony in Annapolis. If you, have, if you would like to attend this event, please contact the Naval Academy Public Affairs. This event will also be live streamed on defense.gov. And switching gears, um, last item here, Marine Corps Exercise Burmese Chase 23 is ongoing now in North Carolina. Burmese Chase is a longstanding annual exercise conducted between the Marine Corps and allied partners to increase readiness and interoperability while employing indirect fire and airstrikes. This year's exercise is being held at Camp Lejeune and includes participants from the Marine Corps 2nd Air Naval Gunfire Liaison Company, also, sorry, also known as Anglico Battalion, and forces from France, the Netherlands, Finland, Norway, the UK, and Sweden. There will be a media day on May 24th, so if you're interested, please contact Marine Corps Public Affairs for additional uh, details. And with that, I'd be happy to take your questions. I don't see we have AP here today, so yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, two yeah. questions. The first on um, on um, the Teixeira case. So there's a, there's a paper trail showing that Jack Teixeira received multiple warnings about abusing his access to classified info. Um, while there's an investigation into this ongoing, more generally, is, is it reasonable in the opinion of DOD for anyone to maintain access to, to their clearance under those circumstances? I'm sorry, repeat your question from so the top that he still maintains access? Oh, he, he maintained his access uh, despite multiple warnings. Okay, because um, he doesn't maintain his access right currently now, sure. right now. So uh, again, as you mentioned right at the top, this is an ongoing investigation, not just by the Department of Justice, but the Air Force has also launched their own internal investigation. Um, so that is what we're waiting for. That's exactly what this investigation will uncover is, you know, as you mentioned, there were reports um, filed by others in his unit um, uh, citing some of these um, uh, violations and so what didn't happen when that's part of what the report will uncover and then second on the on the Patriot system in Ukraine is yeah. there any update as to the the type of projectile that hit the battery and or the state of the system at this point so for more specifics on the Patriot itself I would refer you to the Ukrainians um, what I can confirm is that one Patriot system was damaged but it has now been fixed and is fully fully back and operational but for anything additional, I'd refer you to the Ukrainians. Thanks, all. Yeah, Nadia. Hi, Sabrina. Nadia Bilbis of Al-Arabiya. Um, can you give us a current assessment of Iran supplying the Houthis with weapons? In other words, has it decreased or increased um, after signing the agreement with Saudi Arabia? And also, can you el elaborate on the, uh, the drugs that are being confiscated in the Arabian Gulf? Sure. So uh, in terms of anything from the agreement, I just have nothing new to announce regarding U.S. policy towards Yemen or our support to the Saudi-led coalition. Um, what we've said before, not just from this podium, but across this administration, is that Iran's transfers of weapons to the Houthis violate U.N. Security Council um, resolutions. And the support for armed groups uh, throughout the region continues to undermine international and regional security um, and, you know, hurts our, our allies and partners in, in the region. I'll just leave it at that. I'm going to go ahead to Carla. Thanks. Yeah. What, what's the Pentagon's latest um, uh, position on F-16s to Ukraine? Uh, there are reports out there that are saying that the, the U.S. is opposed to even the training of Ukrainian pilots on F-16s right now. I have nothing new to announce on F-16s at this time. So, so does the Pentagon... Um, 
does the Pentagon agree that the Ukrainian pilots should be trained on F-16s? Are, are you actively saying no to Western nations? Because we know that the Pentagon has to approve before they can be sold and transferred. Mm -hmm. But what about the training? So again, I mean, you've seen that we've rolled out multiple presidential drawdown authorities and including USAI assistance. Our priority remains on supporting Ukraine with what it needs and for whatever it takes and forever how, how long it takes. Our priority has been uh, giving Ukraine the air defense systems that they need and, and also their other priorities include armor and artillery. That's what we've been focused on with our packages, but when it comes to F-16s, I just have nothing new to announce today. Okay, and what about the transfer authority? Anything to update on us there? Politico is reporting that the administration is not opposed to transferring a, a third party, transferring its F-16s to Ukraine. I've seen those reports, but I have nothing to add at this time. Okay, thanks. Oren. Uh, where do the department's efforts related to extremism stand? A new DOD instruction was released back in December 2021, along with some immediate actions, but they were medium and long-term efforts. Yep. Yet we've heard little, uh, if anything, about where the implementation of those longer-term efforts stand. Is DOD still following through on those recommended actions? And, and when will we get an update on to the implementation of those? So uh, one, one piece that has been or has already started to be implemented is the training piece. Um, but the Countering Extremist Activity Working Group developed, uh, I believe, of six recommendations and um, actions across four lines of effort, which include military justice and, and policy, support and oversight of insider threat program, investigative processes and screenings capability, and education and training. And so one portion of that, the training piece, has been implemented and it continues to be implemented across the department. Um, Again, all recommendations have been assigned and are with the appro appropriate principal staff. Um, but at this time, I just have nothing more to announce. Yeah, cost them in the back, and then I'll come up to the front. Uh, Sabrina, I was wondering about the Patriot system. How do, do you have any insight how the Patriot system failed to intercept the incoming missile? I'm sorry, could you repeat your last yeah, part? The, do, do you have any insight how the... Patriot system in, in Ukraine failed to capture or to intercept the incoming missile. Um, in I would refer you to the Ukrainians to speak more on how they're operating the Patriot. All I can tell you is I, if you're referring to the Patriot that was um, damaged, it was, you know, it was, it was uh, temporarily or um, uh, there was minor damage to the Patriot. It, it has been repaired. It is fully back online and operational. But for any more specifics on that, I would refer you to the Ukrainians to speak to that. If, if the Patriot system was the target of that missile, or somehow it was a part of the collateral damage of the missile, do, do you know? I wouldn't be able to speak to that. That would be a question for the Ukrainians to speak to. Yeah, Rio. Uh, thank you very much. Two mm -hmm. questions. First, the president canceled a trip to Papua New Guinea. How much are you concerned that his cancellation might affect the ongoing defense cooperation with Pacific Island nations, including the signing of the defense cooperation agreement with Papua New Guinea? Well, you probably heard from the White House on this, but um, the U.S. is a Pacific nation, and uh, we have deep historical ties to the Pacific Islands. Um, now, while the president canceled his trip, we know that the Secretary Blinken is continuing on and will continue the trip, and we look forward to the results of that meeting. But we know, we understand that this is an important relationship, and we will continue to work closely with our international partners and allies in the region um, when it comes to sustaining the security and stability within the, within the Indo-Pacific. Oh. Okay, uh, secondly, uh, the Chinese military aircraft and Chinese ships are operating actively around Japan yeah. over the last one week. Uh, do you assess the Chinese are demonstrating their opposition to the G7, G7 leaders meeting in Hiroshima? Well, I wouldn't be able to get into the mind of the PRC. You'd have to ask them for their intention. Um, the president uh, and other leaders are there for the G7, um, and they're there to discuss an open and free Indo-Pacific. But I would refer you to the PRC for, for comment on, on their actions specifically. Yeah, I'll come right here in the front. Thanks, Sabrina. Constantine with uh, Military.com. Yeah, nice uh, to see you. Thank you. Uh, just to follow up on Oren's question, are sure. you able to talk a little bit more about the extre extremism training that you say has now been implemented across the department? I would have to get back to you a little bit more on the specifics of that training, um, so I'm happy to take that question and get back to you. Thank you. No problem. What about right here in the front? Yeah. 
Thank you. Um, have any contracts been awarded yet for the commercial satellite imagery services that were part of this latest USAI uh, package for Ukraine? The USAI that was rolled out uh, just a few, like two weeks ago? Yeah. The um, most yes, I believe. I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know that any contracts have been awarded, only that we have announced that we plan to, to contract. But in terms of actual contracts that have been awarded, we'll, we'll keep you updated on that. But I don't have an announcement on that. Okay. You don't have time. any timeline for when you expect that? I don't. Not at this time. Yeah. Over there in the back, green shirt. Thanks for taking my question. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, are there any DOD Do you mind speaking up a little bit? I'm sorry. Are there any DOD policy changes that have been made regarding the handling of or access to classified information in the wake of the leaks? Well, pretty immediately we did, and, and I, I think a few of us have spoken to this, um, when the leaks first came to light, one of the things that we did was immediately call down our, our um, email distro lists. Um, and updated those to make sure that there were active participants on that list, and but also to make sure that um, the people who needed access to that information had that, uh, that it was the right person uh, part of those lists. Um, we've also taken steps to limit printing capabilities. Um, we've uh, s started to re-educate people on, on what it means to work in a classified space and handle classified information. For example, every time I open my computer right now, I get a notice that says you are in a classified space and therefore you should you know, abide by handling this information in the way that you've been trained to. Um, so yes, there have been immediate steps. Um, one of the benefits that we have is that there is an ongoing investigation with the DOJ and also the Air Force. So um, as the investigation continues and we get those results, of course, we could make more adjustments, and that's sort of what leads to um, better practices in the future. Great. Yep, in the hat. Right, thank you. Uh, what is the status of the Army's investigation into last month's Apache collision in Alaska, and will uh, the Deputy Secretary's visit to Alaska involve any discussion or inspection on the issue? I'd have to refer you to the Army on more specifics on that. I just don't have any update on um, on the collision itself or where the investigation stands. And in terms of what the Deputy Secretary will be seeing, you know, I'll let her team speak to that. Um, I'm sure that will be part of the conversation, among many other things that she'll be going up there to discuss. Just to follow up on that, sure. Senator Gillibrand has requested that the DOD commit to a review of mm -hmm fatal rotary wing aircraft training incidents in the last, at least over the last year, of which there's been at least three in the last five months. Mm -hmm. uh, is the, the department considering doing that? Just I just don't have an update for you at this time on that. Yeah. Yeah, right here. Uh, Secretary Austin, in his testimony earlier this week, said uh, that there was a presidential drawdown that would be announced, I guess, relatively soon for Taiwan. Um, without getting into the specifics of, of that, could you elaborate on the on the detail on, on the types of weapons that could be in that or the t or a timeline? Uh, we don't. I just don't have right now more specifics to add than what the secretary uh, laid out at his testimony. Um, as he mentioned, that a, a package will be coming soon, um, and this is part of our long-standing obligations that we have to Taiwan. But I just, in terms of what's going to be included in the package, I just don't have anything to preview right now. Okay. Just secondly. Mm -hmm. um, could you update us on the status of the investigation into the drone strike that targeted a U.S. convoy in Iraq? I guess it was a little over a month ago now. Uh, yes, I know. It, sorry. Um, I don't have any further update at this time. I'd refer you to CENTCOM for more details. Yeah. Right here. Thank you, Sabrina. Uh, yeah. Regarding uh, to F-16, uh, to my colleague's uh, question, um, uh, does we understand that uh, the DOD still uh, believe that the F-16 are not what Ukraine needs for the stage of the conflict? We believe what Ukraine needs is what Ukraine has asked us for and, and has prioritized, which are air defense systems, which we continue to give, which we continue to provide either through pres presidential drawdown authorities or through USAI packages. Um, but air defense systems is something that um, we've prioritized and, and something that the Ukrainians you see employing on the battlefield um, every day. Um, and then it's also artillery and armor. Um, those are their, uh, not necessarily in that order, but their top three requests. Those are some things that we continue to honor um, with each package and we continue to prioritize. 
Um, the Ukrainians are are inc being incredibly um, creative on the battlefield using different systems provided by countries all across the world. Um, and what you're seeing is an air, a layered air defense system, not just using the Patriots. Patriot is one aspect, but they're using NASAMs and other capabilities um, to combat against Russian aggression. So we feel confident in, in what we've provided. Yeah, I'll go to Tom. Thanks, Sabrina. Good afternoon. Yeah. afternoon. Uh, I have a couple very quick uh, follow-ups to questions already asked during this briefing. One, uh, in the repair of the Patriot system, to the mm -hmm. best of your knowledge, uh, did U.S. Uh, help remotely? You know how we talked about sometimes the U.S. would provide maintenance and stuff, uh, suggestions. Did you know if, they, if the U.S. was able to provide uh, assistance to repair the Patriot remotely? We have been able to provide assistance in the past with different uh, capabilities. That's something that um, we've offered in training, and I believe the United States did provide some assistance uh, when it came to the uh, repair of the Patriot. And on the follow-up on the, the extremist questions that have been asked, uh, two sub questions quickly. One is that uh, in the ensuing investigation, if there is one, of possible superiors who may have known of uh, the alleged actions by Teixeira, it wouldn't be a DOG investigation, right? That would be either Air Force or DOD. I'm sorry, can you repeat the question Certainly. exactly? Certainly. Yeah. Uh, the, the investigation of Teixeira is the DOG and Air Force. We know that. But yeah. in subsequent investigations, to find those adjustments that you referred to earlier in the briefing, would that be a DOD investigation as to why those in the Air Force did not properly respond to uh, comments by Teixeira's uh, um, um, co-workers that this was happening? Would that be purely a DOD or Air Force investigation, or would that be also DOJ? I think you might be parsing it a bit too much and trying to... I'm looking, I'm looking okay, well, then maybe I'm not understanding the question uh, properly, but I'll try. So both investigations are running in tandem with each other, but they're separate. Each investigation will have its own findings that, we, that the department will be able to use to inform better practices going forward. So for instance... Thank you. Okay. So they're in tandem. In other words, the Air Force investigation correct. is by itself. It's not working with the DOG. That's correct. Okay. That, thank you. And then the okay. final one is in the adjustments that are going on in regards to classified information, mm -hmm. uh, there are three mar active duty Marines uh, who were charged in regards to January 6th activities on Capitol Hill, one of which uh, had a hearing yesterday, Wednesday. Uh, all three of those are involved in intelligence collections and are still on active duty doing intelligence collections. Uh, would this be some area, take, stepping aside from these three Marines, on a broadly speaking, would this be one of the adjustment areas that would be looked upon that people who are charged with ed incidents like January 6th or still have access to intelligence who are linked to the extremism? It certainly could be something that we look into, but again, everyone is, uh, is um, innocent until proven guilty. This is a, a, a case that's going through the court. I'm going to just finish right here. So again, this is a case that's going through the courts. I'm not going to comment on an ongoing litigation, but we will take any piece from the investigation, both either the Air Force or what is happening at DOJ, to inform our best practices uh, moving forward when it comes to handling classified documents or, or accessing classified systems. Great. Yeah, Mike. One sec. Hold on, Mike. Mm -hmm. Provided, uh, quote, some assistance to Ukraine regarding the Patriot repair work. Is that on the ground there in Ukraine? Because that's where the re repairs were done, or was it done remotely? Or can you, can you be sort of uh, specified a little bit about how would the level of assistance you have I'm not going to get into more specifics on the assistance that was provided, only that we did offer our support and, and provide assistance. But this is not just, you know, one case. We have done this before with other um U.S. provided systems, and um, again, we have offered training to the Ukrainians uh, that you are aware of, uh, both at Fort Sill and in Grafenvir, um, that helps them maintain these these weapons and capabilities on the battlefield. Great. Yeah, Oren. Is the Defense Department aware of any other cases in which a service member has been reprimanded one or more times for inappropriate handling of classified info and yet has retained access to that information would that be common i'm not aware of that um i would have to check i mean that would be a question for each service and i just don't know the answer off the top of my head on that one okay great anyone else all right 
we can call it a day. Thanks. <laughs>